And so for a number of years, the Cultural Landscape Foundation has been actively involved in engaging in a conversation on the South Parks. We've been involved because the University of Chicago's bid called for the confiscation of parkland at either Jackson Park or Washington Park, land held for 150 years in public trust. This is nationally significant and historic parkland. Jackson and Washington Parks, along with the Midway, were designed by Olmsted Sr., the father of landscape architecture, the creator of New York Central and Prospect Parks. And the involvement of Olmsted and his sons with the Chicago Parks lasted for decades. All three parks are listed in the National Register of Historic Places, and for the folks in the, uh, the community that are interested in nature and ecology, one could probably argue that this might have been the first brownfield site in America, designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. Now, people say, why didn't you raise these questions earlier? Well, on February 12, 2015, the Huffington Post published our letter that we sent to the President and Mrs. Obama, in which we said, please don't approve the taking of parkland for the Obama Presidential Library. There was no response to our letter or the Huffington Post posting. What is now called the Obama Presidential Center, a private facility to be built on public land and not a presidential library administered by the National Archives, as approved by the city on January 21, 2015, may well provide significant economic benefits to Chicago's South Side. I sincerely hope that all of the promises that were made to residents by the University of Chicago and the Obama Foundation during their carefully controlled community presentations come to pass. We shall see. I'm sure my fellow panelists have more to say about that. However, the University of Chicago, Mayor Emanuel, the Chicago Park Board, the Obama Foundation, and others have set a bad and frankly dangerous precedent by taking parkland held in public trust for the center. The promise of revitalization and economic benefit need not come at the expense of parkland. It's not an either or situation. Chicago's South Side can have both. For example, there's a vacant city-owned land across the street from Washington Park and adjacent to public transportation that could be used for the center. Siting the OPC across the street from Washington Park could effectively extend the boundaries of the park. In addition, the University of Chicago owns land that could be used for the center. It's worth remembering that the three other universities that vied to host the OPC proposed to site it on land owned by each of those universities. The University of Chicago was the only one that demanded parkland for the purpose. This is an all reward, no risk situation for the university. They have no skin in the game, but now they can develop and make money off of the land they own. Rather than using some of it for the OPC, and we do know that they've spent millions of dollars in the past few years buying more land on the south side. We have yet to find out what benefits the community will get, but it's reasonable to assume the university is set to make a bundle. The taking of parkland is a bad precedent for Chicago because it opens up other city parks for similar development. Moreover, it's a bad precedent for the nation because privatizing parkland for the OPC gives a green light to every municipality in the country to confiscate parkland for other enter private enterprises. Where does it end? This symposium this evening is important because despite all of the tightly controlled public meetings, one of the greatest problems surrounding this process is a lack of transparency. In a conference call among the panelists a couple of weeks ago, Naomi Davis said that not enough community education was happening. Instead, we have a virtual cult of secrecy. Here are some of the things we need to know. One. First, we've never seen the University of Chicago's bid for the OPC. What's in it? And we need to know about the university's land holdings on the south side. Right now, that information is about as available as President Trump's tax returns. <laughs> Two, we need to know how security hardening will affect the park. The OPC promises greater connectivity between the neighborhood and the park. Is that possible given security concerns? Three. Could the $175 million slated for OPC-related road construction instead be used to acquire a suitable plot of land on the south side for the OPC? Four, we need to know how and when the OPC will be reviewed for compliance with the Urban Parks and Recreation Recovery Program, which provided money for planting more than 1,000 trees, shrubs, and ornamentals in Jackson Park. And then finally, we need to know how and when the OPC will be reviewed through the lens of Section 4F. 
I know I'm a Washington guy, and this must all sound like gobbledygook, but these are critical review processes. Um, the Department of Transportation Act, which prohibits the Federal Transit Administration and other US DOT agencies from using land in publicly owned parks, recreation areas, wildlife and waterfowl refuges, or public and private historic properties unless there is a feasible and prudent alternative to use it. It makes no sense to plan for the project first and postpone addressing these legal requirements which could be deal breakers. The rule is do it right or do it twice. Let me close by saying that I've spent my entire career working with public parkland. First in private practice in New York City, working on iconic home des design landscapes like Prospect Park, then 15 years with the federal government at the National Park Service, developing guidelines for the nation's cultural landscapes, and for the past 20 years as the founder and CEO of the Cultural Landscape Foundation. I can say that not since the city's bid for the 2016 Olympics, sorry, sorry, that would have plopped a stadium into Washington Park, have I ever seen such an egregious misuse of parkland or such irresponsibility on the part of the city officials and agencies entrusted with its care. We can do better. Residents on the south side should not be forced to sacrifice parkland to attract the OPC. There are other options, as President Obama told us just last week when he said, there is so much room. Think about all the abandoned buildings and vacant lots around here. In closing, let's go for a win-win. Let's keep the OPC on the south side and let's keep valuable parkland also. Thank you.